Now that we have made circuit simulations in Tinkercad, let's make a few circuits in the real world. To make a circuit, the first thing you need is a source of energy. Here, we have got two rechargeable batteries that are 1.2 volts each, making this a 2.4 volts battery pack. This battery pack has got two terminals, a positive terminal and a negative terminal. It is not a rule, but usually, the wire from the positive terminal is red, and the wire from the negative terminal is black. We have a red wire and a black wire coming from the battery pack. And we have attached alligator clips to one end of these wires. Alligator clips make it easier for young students to make connections. Here, we have got some components, and we are going to use these components to make a few circuits. The first component we are going to use is a bulb. We have mounted this bulb on a wooden block with screws. And we have connected wires from the two terminals of the bulb to two nails. The nails make it easier to connect alligator clips to the components. Instead of buying expensive kits, this is a cheap way to make circuits. Let's make our first circuit using this bulb and battery pack. We will take the wire from the negative terminal of our battery and connect it to one of the terminals of bulb. Then, we will take the wire from the positive terminal of the battery and connect it to the other terminal of the bulb. Voila! Our bulb starts to glow. In this circuit, the electrons are flowing from the battery to one terminal of the bulb, going through the filament inside the bulb, coming out from the other side and back into the other terminal of the battery. This completes the circuit and the bulb starts to glow. The bulb glows because the flowing electrons make the filament inside the bulb very hot and this heat makes the filament glow. Next, let's repeat the experiment we did on Tinkercad when we swap the positive and negative terminals of the battery connected to the bulb to see if the bulb will stop glowing. Disconnect the negative wire from the battery and connect the positive wire to this terminal of the bulb. Connect the negative wire where the positive wire was earlier connected. The bulb still glows. We can infer that changing the polarity does not impact the bulb glowing. In an earlier video, we said, a simple definition of electronics is controlling the flow of electrons. One way we can control the flow of electrons is by using mechanical switches. To learn about switches, let's connect this push button on-off switch to our circuit. To do this, disconnect the positive wire from the battery and connect it to one of the terminals of this switch. Then, take another wire and connect it to the second terminal of the switch. Connect this wire to one of the terminals of the bulb. The other terminal of the bulb is connected to the negative side of the battery. In this circuit, the electrons start to flow from the battery and go to the switch. From the second terminal of the switch, the yellow wire is connected to one of the terminals of the bulb. The second terminal of the bulb is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. When the switch is turned on, the bulb starts to glow. And when the switch is turned off, the bulb stops glowing. What do you think is happening inside the switch? Pause the video and think. Remember, the ability to think is very important to deepen your understanding. If we trace the flow of electrons in our circuit, from the battery, the electrons are flowing to the switch. Inside the switch, there are two metallic plates. Metallic plates are like wires and allow the flow of electrons. When the switch is pushed in, the two metallic plates touch each other and electrons start to flow in the circuit. When the switch is pushed again, the two metallic plates get disconnected. They no longer touch each other. This stops the flow of electrons in the circuit and the bulb stops glowing. In this circuit, we are controlling the flow of electrons with this mechanical switch. This is a simple on-off switch and there are many different types of switches. For example, this is another type of switch that controls how many electrons will flow in the circuit. In the first switch, when the metallic plates inside the switch were connected, all the electrons were flowing. When the switch was off, the metallic plates were disconnected and no electrons or zero electrons were flowing. In this second type of switch, which is called a variable resistance switch, we can control how many electrons will flow in our circuit. This second switch has got three terminals. We will connect one wire to the middle terminal of this switch and we will connect the other wire to one of the other two side terminals of this switch. 
As the knob is turned, the bulb first glows a little, and then it glows more. This is happening because, when the knob is on one side, no electrons flow through. As the knob on the switch is turned, more and more electrons are able to flow through. This changes the intensity of the bulb. This switch works in the same way as the regulator in a fan. Let's look at a third type of switch. This one is called a tilt switch. Connect the wires as we had connected for the simple on-off switch. When this switch is tilted one way, the bulb starts to glow, because the electrons are flowing and the circuit is complete. But when the switch is tilted the other way, the bulb stops glowing. Can you figure out how this switch might be working? Think about what was happening to the metallic plates inside the simple on and off switch. Pause the video and ponder a little. There is a tiny metallic ball inside the switch. When the switch is tilted in one direction, the metallic ball falls to that side of the switch. If it is the side with the two terminals, the metallic ball connects them and the electrons start flowing. The circuit is complete and the bulb glows. When the switch is tilted in the other direction, the metallic ball falls to the other side and the two terminals are no longer connected. This stops the flow of electrons and the bulb stops glowing. I hope an understanding of how these three switches work gives you a sense of how different types of switches can be used to control the flow of electrons in a circuit. In a later video, instead of using switches, we will use sensors to control the flow of electrons in a circuit. Sensors like sound sensor, light sensor, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and many more. Do try making these circuits yourself. Electronics is a lot of fun when you make things. See you in the next video.